Hello friends, welcome to Yogic and Modern Science. Today's topic is very interesting and based on the recent scientific findings. And this is the finding on which three physicists got the Nobel Prize in 2022. And I was just going through their finding and I was sort of comparing their findings with the principles of yogic science. And I found many similarities between the principles of yogic science and their findings. Three people got the Nobel Prize on, and these three people are Alan Aspect, John F. Clauser, and Anton Jelenjgar. And they experimented with the photons. And their finding was that if photons are very, very far away from each other in the universe, supposing there is one photon here on Earth and one photon is there in some other galaxy, then there is some kind of information trans transmission. The transmission of information between these two photons. Two photons are entangled in some way or other. So this is a great finding. And for this, what they did was they polarized one photon. And in the process of polarization, the one photon got into two photons and they were placed far away from each other. Okay, suppose one photon got polarized to convert it into two separate photons and one photon is on the earth in this galaxy and the other photon in some other galaxy, very far away from each other. And experimentally they proved that they, both the photons have the complementary angular momentum, right? And they are entangled with each other in this way. So, I mean, from this finding, we can conclude that in this universe, all the particles, or for that matter, we can say everything in this universe are related with each other through energy, you can say, or through information transference. But if you compare this finding with the principles of yogic science, when from the outset, we have maintained that in this universe, everything is interrelated with each other. And everything has proceeded from the one principle. And the memory of the one principle remains at every level of the universe. Let me again explain in brief all the three principles. In the first principle of yogic science, there is non-dual energy. The energy which is one in which there is no other element. There is only one element. But this element is very, very active, very dynamic. And when in this non-dual energy, spontaneously there arises two systems of energy. The energy of consciousness, pure consciousness, and the energy of prakriti. Or you can say the energy of such a system using which something can be created. That is energy of Prakriti. And there is the third, you can say, a state of energy, which is called Drashta also. 
in the first principle drashta is intrinsic with the same energy but when drashta becomes active it comes out of the system and before the drashta there are two systems of energy the energy of prakriti and the energy of parmatma or the pure consciousness and in the whole prakriti there are multiple conscious agents or jivatma jivatmas are nothing but the same first principle but it is there inside the prakriti right so that uh, the creative work can happen creativity can take place inside the prakriti right now i mean this is something to be thought about if everything is originated from the one the from the first principle then the memory is always there if the first principle got into the two types of energy converted into two types of energy then these energies know their unity also right and the same thing gets transmitted in all the systems within the prakriti in all the units right so i mean to say the principles are same the formula is same the same principle is working at each and every level in the prakriti and in this way everything is interrelated but from the yogic science point of view they are interrelated from their memory or sometimes the memory is also known as sambandh and sanskaras conditioning so conditioning in the form of memory memory is a very general term and memory this term is understood by almost everybody that is why i am using this word memory otherwise in many religious systems the sambandh and sanskaras are used extensively used so things are interrelated with each other through memory and this is what is known in yogic science and the same thing is has been proved by these three scientists who got the nobel prize in 2022 to find that if two photons are one photon is uh, split into two photons and they are placed far away with each other then they you know exchange information they exchange energy means the dynamic of one photon depends upon the dynamic of another photon and vice versa this is a great experiment if we need to prove that everything is interrelated in this universe so in today's episode this is what i wanted to explain that whatever is being found out in physics in astrophysics physics right the, by the contemporary scientist somewhere or other they are based on the eternal principles of what yogic science discovered long long back so hopefully you must have understood uh, the the principles of yogic science and how the principles of yogic science is being proved by the scientists also contemporary scientists also at a very very objective level because the objectivity is their limitation because they don't involve the consciousness and memory everything in this these terms are are used by the people like us because we uh, whatever we say through yogic science it is based upon the spiritualism we consider consciousness as something fundamental not objective reality right because from the yogic science point of view objective reality does not exist whatever is the part of memory is unreal 
because memory is unreal. Right now I am speaking to you, you are listening, this is real. But after a second, it will become the memory, right? Memory means something has happened. Now it is not there. That is why it becomes a memory. So in this universe, everything is happening out of this memory. That is why we say that the whole universe is unreal because it is based on memory. And the same thing nowadays is being proved by the physicist also, by the theoretical physicist also, that the universe is unreal. But they say the universe is unreal on the basis of some other things, right? On the basis of like quantum mechanics, photons or photons at the quantum level, means any particle at the quantum level, they are not localized in a space. They are not localized in time. That is why they are saying it is unreal. But the in the yogic science point of view, the unreality of universe, it is not proved, it is seen by the seers, the people who have seen the reality, the reality can be seen because there is a system, drashta, okay, drashta is there at every level. Drashta, what we call drashta is known by the physicist or the scientist as the observer. So there is a great role of observer in, in quantum mechanics also. And observer plays a vital role. In fact, this is the observer in the presence of whom everything takes place, everything happens. So in some other episode, uh, we'll take up the subject of drashta or observer. And from the observer point of view, we will you know, talk about this topic so that it becomes more and more clear. So friends, that's all in this episode. Thank you.